Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Linney, and I show up here every week because you deserve to create space in your mind and your life so that you can design a business that gives you time, freedom, money, everything you crave. And this month, I'm talking about one thing, visibility. Because if we want to create more time, more freedom, more money in our businesses, we need to be seen. Now, this isn't rocket science, right? But it's mostly the thing that I see my clients and just women in business in general hiding from is visibility. Because for many women entrepreneurs, there is nothing scarier than the V word. Visibility means we're putting ourselves out there. Now, logically, we know visibility is a non-negotiable because in order to make money, grow a business, we must market our businesses. We must make offers. We must message clearly so that people know who we are and who we help and also how we help, right? But I know that it's terrifying to be seen. So what we do is we actually avoid being seen in some really sneaky ways. And one of those ways is telling yourself, I'm not sure who I help. And that's a way that people stay stuck. They try to help everyone or they spend too much time in the ideation mode. The other thing that people do is they say, I'm not really sure what to say. And so they give themselves that excuse and then they stay hidden. So they don't market themselves. They don't message. They don't send emails. They don't put invitations out there. The other thing that people tell themselves is, I'm not sure how to do this, whether it's how to have a hard conversation, how to charge more, how to be seen. So they always stay stuck. Now, whatever your way of staying hidden is, it is sabotage, straight up sabotage. It keeps us unseen and it keeps us from the money we crave, the freedom we want, the energy we need, and the time we so desperately want right now. Now, last week, I actually heard this old Dusty Springfield song from 1964. You've definitely heard it before. It's the um, wishing and hoping and thinking and praying. And it's a whole song about that and taking action because that's not going to get you what you want. And I kind of tuned into the words of this song, this song from 1964. And I thought about how many women entrepreneurs I know who use wishing and hoping and thinking and praying as their business strategy. How many women out there are hoping and wishing and hinting and planning and dreaming because actually being noticed, actually being seen is just too freaking scary for them. So they stay invisible. They passively wait for the client of their dreams to notice them, right? It got me riled up and it made me think like, I need to talk about visibility in November. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing it for my clients and I'm doing it for you too. Because frankly, hinting is not a winning strategy, but so many people use hinting. They don't want to come out and say what they are doing, what how they are helping, how they serve people. Wishing is not a success strategy either. Waiting around is not a strategy for anything. Whatever it is you want, waiting is not going to help you. So here's the thing. We need a strategy that works for you because I know there's all these people out there saying that there's there's the bulletproof way of doing it. There's this funnel. There's a four-minute funnel that works for you. There's one strategy that works for you, but there is no one-size-fits-all strategy for visibility, for marketing, for growing a business. And that's why we get to design our own strategy. And you're going to have to do more than just hinting and hoping and wishing and waiting and planning. You're going to have to take action. And today, that's what we're going to talk about, how to be open and direct, even if it's terrifying. It does not have to be pushy or gross or aggressive to be visible. 
Like I said before, creating visibility is not rocket science, but we totally treat it like it is. We harbor stories about how complicated it is to market ourselves. And I've told those stories before here on this mar- on this podcast, right? I've told you about how I used to feel pushy and aggressive being visible. And we're going to talk today about how people will judge us. And we, we keep that from letting us be visible, how they don't really want to hear what we have. So why bother, right? And then we hide and we hope some people will figure it out, that we're amazing. I don't know how we're going to figure it out, but we do. We really tell ourselves that story. So obviously people need to know that you have a business, that you want to grow your business. They need to know how to buy from you. They need to know exactly what you do so they can refer someone to you. And if you're not visible, then that business is not growing. So let's talk about the three big excuses that we use to stay hidden. And I'm also, for each excuse, I'm sharing an antidote for every single one. So let's go. The first up is we tell ourselves people might not want our thing. Like, what if I go to all this trouble and I create an offer or a service or a product and I pour all my love and brilliance into it and no one wants it? Actually, we convince ourselves that it's total garbage, right? We think about all the people out there who wouldn't want it, who couldn't afford it, who wouldn't be interested. We think about those people. And then when we think about those people, we become afraid because we know how much it would suck to create all that content and spend all that time generating the this thing that we know somebody needs. But then we tell ourselves that nobody wants it. Well, what's the antidote? Well, the antidote is to know exactly who needs what you have in your marketplace. You don't just put an unvetted idea out there. I mean, some entrepreneurs do, and that really bites them in the ass, but you have to talk to people. You have to find out who are the exact right people who want the thing, who wants it, and who else would want it. Why would they want it? How will it make their life better? How could they use it? How else could they use it? When would they want it? These are the questions that you need to know inside and out, upside down and backwards. What's the need in the marketplace for your offer, your product, or your service? Because when you know that somebody out there needs this, it makes visibility a lot less gross and yucky, and you'll stop avoiding it. Now, assumptions are your worst enemy here, because the more that you actually know about why the market needs your brilliance, the easier it is to be seen. It's obviously, we are avoiding something because of the unknown. So let me give you an example. When I was in my first business at the fitness studio, I met a lot of creative women solopreneurs who were our clients. And then in my conversations with them, I noticed that they weren't really accomplishing a lot. They had a ton of ideas. They had ambition. They had dreams, but they had tons of trouble activating, focusing, and making money. Was there a need for coaching specifically for creative women entrepreneurs Yes, the need was huge. They wanted accountability, they needed mindset shifts, and they craved more money. The need was super obvious. So all I started thinking about was those women, not the women who already had a business, not the women who are already you know, making six and seven figures, those women who weren't even yet making four to five figures a month. That's where I started. The need was obvious. Do your people need you? Are you sure? If you are sure, then there's no excuse for you being invisible. You want to speak directly to those people. But if not, if you're not sure, here are some simple questions you can ask around the idea of who needs my stuff. Who needs it? What do they need? When do they need it? Where do they need it? How do they need it? And why do they need it? So it's basically the five questions, the six questions, who, what, when, where, why, and how. When you know those answers inside and out, it's much easier to be visible because you know that there's a, there's a stream of people out there who desperately need you. And you'll be finding, you'll find that being visible to your ideal dream client suddenly doesn't feel like a choice anymore. It feels like, oh, this is imperative because they need me, right? No, this isn't bullshit. This isn't an option. They have a problem, they have a need, and you have a solution and you hiding keeps the solution from them. So to wrap up number one excuse, remember that the first visibility lie is no one needs this thing so I can hide. But the truth is, the antidote is, sure, there are people out there who don't need you and you don't have to be visible to them, but you do need to be visible to your absolute dream client because the, the need is so great. So find that need and the lie that no one needs this disappears. Okay. Next up is visibility lie two, which is that people might judge me. What if I put myself out there and people think, who the hell is she? 
What a farce. I can't believe she's doing that. You worry that people will talk shit about what you look like, what words you use, how much you charge. Well, here's the antidote to this visibility lie. The truth is that 100%, yes, people will judge you. They will judge you for being broke, and then others will judge you for being loaded. Some will judge you for being too thin. Others will judge you for being too heavy. Some will judge you for leaving your job. Others will judge you for staying at your job. There is always someone out there judging you, no matter what you do. Like You can't make this problem go away. It's not a you problem. It's a them problem. If you're hiding in your business, are you afraid of visibility? There are people judging you for that. Are you showing up every single day, present, reaching out? Then there are people judging you for that. I'm telling you, the best way to deal with people judging you, well, you could say, I don't care, because that's not really realistic. Many of us do care, including me. So this antidote has two parts. The first is expect people to judge us. Of course they do, because that's what people do. I completely take the energy out of this problem by not making it a problem. It's simply a truth to me, something I expect. People will judge me. So if someone judges me, of course they do. And if they don't, that's kind of like the icing on the cake for me. That's just a bonus. That's fantastic. Now, the second part of this antidote is to think about who these judges are. And let me give you an example. There's a woman in my life, I guess you could call her a friend, but she's not really a friend. She's not close to me. She just, she's a person I know and she makes fun of the pictures that I post because I use photos of myself all the time in my marketing. And they're really beautiful photos. Uh, I mean, and I mean that in the professional way, like they're taken by a professional photographer and they're high quality. They're not just like, you know, crappy selfies that I've taken So they're high quality, but she teases me about going on photo shoots. She teases me about my face always being in her feed. She teases me about my poses and what I wear. And man, I'll tell you, this is definitely a sore area for me because I'm self-conscious about my photos. Well, I I used to be much more self-conscious about them and I don't always love the way I look in pictures, but that's how I look, right? So I could really let this take me down to a dark place, but instead I think about who she is because that's the antidote here. She is an insecure woman who struggles greatly with anxiety. She's a terrible communicator in her own relationships. She's a fairly unhappy person in her own life. She's actually working two or three jobs depending on the day. She's always struggling to make ends meet. And she probably looks at me and thinks, who the hell does Jen think she is? I bet she wishes she had more confidence. She definitely wishes that she made more money. And I bet she would love to love herself, but she has no idea what that means. This is not a person who has any power over me. How does her judgment actually affect my life? It doesn't unless I allow it to, because here's the thing. I made six figures in my business this year. I made it out of thin air. I don't need someone to pay me a paycheck. I have a business that is at capacity. I have clients that I love and work that fills me up. What does she have? Well, she has anxiety and worry. She has self-doubt and crippling debt. So why would her opinion of me matter to me? Not everyone will like you being visible, right? Not everyone will cheer you on, but I promise you, it's really not about you. It's about them because they can't imagine doing what you're doing. It makes them feel unsafe for you. And when you understand that and you come to expect judgment, it's so much easier to put it in the box where it belongs. All I can say is for this visibility lie, just work on your own self-judgment. That's the only judgment worthy of your time to worry about. Because you'll never convince everyone that you're great or worthy. So why bother trying? And I know this one is a heavy one and it's a lot to consider. But I'm telling you, this one was a game changer for me. When I took the antidote for this one, it made my life a lot easier. Now, number three is the last visibility lie I want to talk about today. And that's the fear of success, which doesn't make sense to people. Why are people afraid of success? Like logically doesn't make sense. But here's how it works. So if I show up, if I'm more visible, if I share my message, if I market myself, if I put my offers out there, maybe people will hire me. Oh my God. And then they'll expect me to show up and follow through. And what if I let them down? What if I can't meet their expectations? I mean, I'm already so tired and overwhelmed. I don't really know what I'm doing anyway, right? So maybe I'll just hide and I won't ever actually have to do the work. That's the visibility lie number three, that if you're successful, it's going to be hard. There's a fear of success because then I'm going to have to really show up and it's really going to get hard. What if I get successful and then have to do the hard work? So here's the antidote to this one, because my friend, you are already doing hard work. Hiding is hard. Spinning around is hard. 
Not making money is hard. Worrying and anxiety and the time and energy that steals from you, that's hard. So you're already spending time and energy on bullshit that doesn't bring you anything you want, not time, energy, freedom, or money. So how about putting your energy to something that gets you what you want? You already show up for your fear and worry like every single day. That's a non-negotiable for you. You already do it without even thinking. What would it be like to trade that in for showing up for your customers and clients? I promise you it would be easier than where you are now. When you let yourself be seen and you market yourself to the exact right people, it's easy to show up for them. Success does not have to be hard. It does not have to be hard work to serve your people. So if you've been wishing and hoping and thinking and praying that your business will grow and you haven't been seen and you haven't been visible and messaging and marketing have been something you're avoiding, then your business is not making money and life probably feels really freaking hard right now. So you want more ease? Here's two things you can do to get visible. Commit to one visibility move every single day. A social post that actually says something about your business and invites people in. Not a like not a meme that you share, not something inspirational, not a quote, but something that actually lets people see you. Send an email to your list with a call to action. Let them know that you have spots available, that you have this brand new product available. Reach out to somebody, somebody who's maybe in your center of influence, somebody that you know if you connected with, you could really benefit from. Ask them out for coffee. Make a call to action. Send an invitation. You have to take action to move the needle forward because all the wishing and hoping and thinking and praying is not action. It feels like action in your brain because it takes up a lot of energy. So connect with someone, talk about your business. Let's make some money. Number two, second thing to get visible, use the hashtag. I am visible in your social posts and you'll be entered into a drawing for a $100 Amazon gift card that I'll be giving away at the end of November. Now, this is not hard. This is anytime you use a social post that actually promotes yourself, use the hashtag I am visible and I will enter your name in every single time you enter, every single time you post. Then next week, I'm going to share a 21-day visibility challenge that'll kick your visibility into high gear and you'll start to see some traction in your confidence and in your business. Next week, I'm bringing on an expert to talk about how our perception of our bodies and old stories about how we look pulls us back from visibility. How awesome is that? Like she's going to talk about the way we think about ourselves and how we look and what that's doing to our businesses. And she's going to teach us what we can start to do to change that for ourselves. So see you then. I thank you for being here each week. I so appreciate you. And if you know somebody who could use this podcast, please share it with him or her. I appreciate you so much. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app and tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.